This is a seismic profile from the Inamori Firth, and we can use this to look at the ways we can interpret faults on seismic profiles. We're going to look at two fault structures here, and we can use this to show how we interpret faults in general. We'll look at the seismic expression of the fault zones and their impact on the seismic signal. In other words, how good our seismic image is. So let's have a look. Here are two fault zones that we're going to consider, and we'll start off looking at the one on the left. And a good place to start is to try and find some reflectors that we can correlate unambiguously across the fault zone. And the best place to do that is relatively shallow, where the seismic quality is better. And that's what we've done here. And we can see that the left-hand side has gone down relative to the right, like this. Right, now let's look at other reflectors. And towards the surface of the data, which is the seabed, we can see there's no offset. So our fault dies out upwards and has no real representation on the modern seabed. Right, so now we're going to start pushing our fault down deeper into the profile. So we can see, again, we can correlate another reflector across the profile like this. And again, the sense of offset is the same as we picked for the yellow reflector, left hand down like this. Okay, going deeper still, we can recognize a fairly distinctive package of reflectors picked out top and bottom by the blue uh, lines on here. Can we correlate these across the fault zone? Yes, they're over here, and they show the same down to the left sense of offset, like this. So in other words, we can now match all these little offsets through the profile to construct a single surface on which the slip has occurred, the fault plane. And more or less the amount of displacement, at least for the reflectors that we picked so far, is more or less constant. This idea of systematic displacements along faults are important in establishing our correlations of reflectors across the fault zone itself. But what about the quality of the seismic image around the fault zone? We can see that in the fault wall, in other words the right hand side of the fault, the seismic quality dims. The amplitudes are reduced and some of the reflector continuity is disrupted as well. In this zone here, it's called a fault shadow and this shadowing effect is really common around fault zones and for normal faults, particularly in the fault wall. So if we take this graffiti away, you can see the effect of this dimming. Right, now let's go and have a look at the fault on the right. Again, the near seabed reflectors we can trace across the profile with little or no offset. So the fault is not really represented at the seabed, it only exists in the subsurface. So let's move down and try and correlate a reflector. Just a little way down we can see the black reflector behind this sort of mustard colour shows a small offset across a break. This time it's the right hand side that's gone down, like this. So let's move a little bit further down in the profile. And down on this part of the profile we can see we have a sin form at depth. Let's try and track this sinform back up towards the surface here and the sinform is less pronounced picked out by this light blue um, line and we can see by here that again can see the sinform is less pronounced. So the manifestation of this sinform is it loses its form as you go up section. But effectively what's happening is the right hand side of the sinform is moving down relative to the left hand side. So again it's showing the same sense of offset as we inferred for the mustard coloured horizon nearer the surface. So it's clearly some kind of fault zone running through here with this sense of displacement systematically down through the profile. The question is what's going on within this grey zone in here? Well maybe there are fault strands in here that are accommodating the displacement. Let's just take away the greyness. So maybe it's not a broad zone, but maybe this area in here is defined by a series of fault strands. So we can compare our two faults. The fault on the left there, we can consider to be a narrow zone within which the slip is localised. More or less the thickness of the red stripe that we put on the diagram. The right-hand structure is rather more complicated. It looks like there's distributed shearing as manifest by the folding at depth, and maybe the fault zone itself is represented by a series of discrete fault strands. So, a quick look at two faults that we've interpreted from the Inamore Firth. We've looked at interpretation approaches, 
of using the good reflector correlations to determine the overall sense of movement and then use those moving systematically reflector to reflector as we move down through the section. We can trace the fault zones down through the profile in this way. We've seen that the quality of the seismic image is degraded approaching the fault zones and this is a common problem in interpreting structures in seismic profiles.